Would I protect myself with a 120 year old revolver? Would I? Would I? Well, the answer is I'd rather not. <laughs> but if that was all I had, absolutely. Especially if it's one of the better guns like this Smith & Wesson hammerless safety revolver. I think this is a third model, as I recall, in 38 s and Now, be leery of the old top breaky, you know, H&R and the owl head revolvers and stuff like that. Because especially the 32 s and ones, they can go back to the late 1880s. And most of them are really not safe to shoot. And especially with modern ammunition. And keep in mind, too, you always need to shoot these with real low-powered, dead-nut stock factory ammunition. Well, the gun in question here is a about turn-of-the-century Smith & Wesson uh, hammerless safety revolver. Uh, it's in 38 Smith & Wesson uh, right here, which is a... Uh, round you can still get loaded and uh, a couple things to keep in mind when you're when you're looking at an old gun like this is you want one that locks up nice and tight like this one does uh, you want one that's got an action that cycles correctly uh, grips that are relatively clean and straight all of those things are real problems uh, if you end up trying to find parts or repair them later but if you get a good clean solid gun originally well then you can pretty much have a lot of fun and the 38 Smith & Wesson is actually fun and easy to reload. So what's the use of shooting polymer pistols which you, you can have fun shooting guns like this? What we're going to do today is just shoot this gun a few times just so you can see it in action because you know a lot of people think they're not accurate, a lot of people think they're not reliable, a lot of people think you can't get ammunition for it and all of that is actually often not the case at all. This particular gun I happen to know is a real shooter. And uh, I think you might be very surprised. The key though is make sure you don't spend too little on the gun. Cause it's like one of those things where when you buy a, a, a vintage Jaguar, it's the most expensive cheap car you'll ever own. So if you buy one of these guns that really needs a lot of work, you just won't be able to fix it and come out ahead. Trust me, I've tried. Okay, I've got factory, very mild. It's uh, 146 grain uh, lead round nose, real classic load. I've chronographed them out of this gun and they're about 525 feet per second. So you can throw rocks almost this fast. So I've got a target set up at about five or six yards. So let's just shoot a few times so you could see this happen. So. Well, as you can see, they're, they're plenty accurate, uh, but this one suffers from the same thing that most of them do, which is it's usually sighted in real high, and uh, you need to keep that in mind if you're gonna shoot yours. You know, as I said earlier, part of the charm is just to see these old guns work. Uh, there's that ejection, but it's proof you need to have a gravity working with you. So uh, nose around a little bit, see if you can find something like this, if this sounds like it's interesting to you. Uh, you know, don't try to change the world with this, because remember, you're shooting these old fashioned lead round nose bullets at kind of powder puff velocities. But still, I think it helps us do what we like to do with the, our hobby here, which is have some fun. So, all right, until I see you next time, stay safe.